Welcome to the white coat ceremony for the class of 2027 at McGovern Medical School. I am Dana McDowell. I'm Associate Dean for Admissions and Student Affairs. Our Vice Dean, Margaret McNeese, sends her regrets she is unable to join us today. We are delighted to welcome the members of the class of 2027 and to have so many of you here this afternoon to witness the commitment of these young people to a life of compassionate service. Because this is meant to be a time for reflection on their commitment and new responsibilities, I must ask that you refrain from photography during the ceremony. There will be time to take pictures after the ceremony concludes. It is now my pleasure to introduce the other members of the stage party. Dr. Latanya Love, Dean of Education, Executive Vice President, Student in University Affairs, and Professor of Pediatrics. Dr. Aaron Verstimming, <laughs> Professor of Neurology and Director of the Neurology Clerkship. Dr. Sheila Lahodi, <laughs> Associate Dean for Admissions and Student Affairs and Professor of Pediatrics. Dr. Mark Horman, <laughs> Vice Dean for Educational Programs and Professor of Pediatrics. Dr. Mark Farney, <laughs> Professor of Internal Medicine and Pediatrics. We would also like to acknowledge our clinical faculty who lead the McGovern Societies. These are the mentoring communities that foster the professional identity formation and development of our medical students. They have shepherded the class of 20, 2027 through their transition into medical school and continue to support their development as student doctors. We thank them for their willingness to be committed to this important role and for their presence here today to call each student to the stage to don their white coat. Our school was founded in 1970 with an incoming class of just 19 students. And over the past 53 years, we have grown into one of the nation's largest and most competitive medical schools with more than 5,000 applicants competing for the 240 spots in our incoming class each year. For our students, there are no shortcuts on the journey that you are undertaking. However, the faculty, administration, and your classmates, as well as your family and friends, continue to support you along the way. Your classmates will be your future colleagues and hopefully lifelong friends. We applaud you as you move forward in your medical education journey. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Dean of Education, Executive Vice President of Student and University Affairs, and Professor of Pediatrics, Dr. Latanya Love. Thank you, Dr. McDowell. And thank you to the class of 2027 and all the parents, family, and friends who are here today. I am delighted to be here today with you with this nice, bright, sunny weather to share in this very special milestone in your lives and careers. I also bring you greetings from our executive dean, Dr. John Hancock, who had a scheduling conflict and is out of the country. We are so proud to be here in this very symbolic ceremony. The white coat is symbolic of the great profession you have chosen to pursue and symbolic of the physician's very privileged role in our profession. It is so wonderful to see many friends and family here today to celebrate with you. Let's give your family and friends a round of applause. <laughs> Dr. Arnold Gold, founder of the Gold Foundation that created the White Coat Ceremony, was a pediatric neurologist who cared for children with serious neurological disorders, some life-threatening, many with limited treatment options at the time. By watching Dr. Gold at the bedside, trainees learned firsthand the powerful marriage of a skilled clinician with a physician that has a compassionate heart. Dr. Gold understood the value of symbol and ceremony when he began the white coat ceremony in 1993. Every time you put on your white coat, you are making an implicit promise to become the very best physician you can be. 
alumni and friends of McGovern Medical School generously sponsored this year's white coats, and this is probably the cleanest they'll ever be. The donation of this white coat typifies the kindness and camaraderie that is fostered at our school and extends far beyond your undergraduate medical training. It is yet another symbol from this day forward, you are truly a member of the McGovern Medical School family. Almost nine years ago, the medical school was named in honor of John and Catherine McGovern. We are proud to honor that name and to be McGovern Medical School where our students, residents, alumni, faculty, and staff carry on Dr. Mike McGovern's ideals of excellence, humanism, and compassion, all attributes that our guest speaker, Dr. Aaron Fur Stemming embodies. Dr. Fur Stemming has clinical expertise in evaluating and treating patients with Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, atypical Parkinsonian syndromes, focal and generalized dystonia, essential tremor, and spasticity. Certified by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology, Dr. Fur Stemming completed her residency and fellowship right here at McGovern Medical School. She has focused her clinical efforts on helping patients with Huntington's disease, a devastating neurological disorder. She is one of the top specialists in that area in this country. We are privileged to have her on our faculty. She is currently a professor and director of the Neurology Clerkship Program, so you're all gonna meet her when you're third years doing your neurology rotation. And she was last year's recipient of the Arnold P. Gold Foundation Leonard Tao Humanism in Medicine Award. Dr. Fur Stemming has been recognized for her consistent demonstration of compassion and empathy in the delivery of care to patients. She is also an outstanding role model for students and colleagues. Please help me welcome my friend and colleague, Dr. Erin Fur Stemming, to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Love, for that uh, lovely, pun intended, introduction. Okay, hi. I'm incredibly honored to address you today on this significant occasion, your white coat ceremony, marking a pivotal moment in your professional journey. Congratulations to the esteemed class of 2027 as you embark on this transformative path. We welcome you to the McGovern Medical School family. Yeah. I would also like to extend a warm welcome and heartfelt congratulations to your number one fans, your proud families and friends who are joining us today to celebrate this momentous occasion. The White Coat Ceremony is an opportunity to acknowledge the sacrifices made for your medical education and to commemorate the beginning of a beautiful journey. Today signifies a crucial juncture as you pursue your medical careers. You will soon be adorned in a symbolic white coat, a garment that carries the weight of responsibility and the privilege of knowledge. As future physicians, you will not simply be practitioners, but you will be storytellers of the human condition. Each patient you encounter will have a narrative, a unique story etched with joy, pain, resilience, and vulnerability. Your role is to be the empathetic scribe, to listen intently, to decode the language of symptoms, and to contribute chapters of healing to their life stories. I have had the honor of countless, hearing countless poignant patient stories over the 16 years that I've practiced as a movement disorder neurologist at UT Health McGovern Medical School. I would like to share two of those stories with you today. The first story is about a patient whom I will refer to as John. John has a rare inherited condition, an inborn error of metabolism that if left untreated can cause severe neurologic symptoms and even death. John's mom knew early in his life that something wasn't quite right with her son. She was concerned about his delayed verbal development at age three. She was told by his initial pediatrician that her son was just fine and likely quiet since his old brother was quite verbal. Due to a change in circumstance, John and his mom saw a second pediatrician. Mom again shared her concerns. 
She referred to John's beautiful blue eyes, his blonde hair, his fair skin, and she mentioned that he required frequent baths due to a musty odor. After listening intently, the pediatrician said, as a matter of fact, I was reading an article in a medical journal over the weekend, and I read about a condition that sounds very similar to John's. I think he may have phenylketonuria, or PKU. Indeed, he was correct. He astutely diagnosed John with PKU. Given the rarity of this condition, John was the only patient this pediatrician would ever go on to see with PKU throughout his entire career. John's mom subsequently became an advocate for those living with PKU and influenced the passing of the bill that requires that newborns are screened for PKU at birth. I have had the pleasure and honor of treating John's neurologic symptoms now for over a decade. What can we take away from John's story? First and foremost, always listen to your patients. Always listen to their family members. They will give you the diagnosis, but you must listen with intention and purpose. Second, always remain humble. Never stop reading and never assume that you know it all. If you are unaware of a condition, you will never diagnose it. The second story is about a patient that I will call Rob. Rob has a diagnosis of Huntington's disease, or HD. As background, HD is an inherited, fatal, neurologic disease that encompasses motor impairments leading to immobility, cognitive decline leading to dementia, and significant psychiatric symptoms with suicide being the second most common cause of death. I'm honored to direct our HD clinic, the only national, nationally designated center of excellence in Texas. When patients decide to undergo predictive genetic testing for HD, we require that they undergo genetic counseling and a mental health assessment to ensure that they're as well prepared and as well informed as possible to receive this life-altering genetic information, which is always disclosed face-to-face, -face, never over the phone. Rob wasn't prepared to receive his devastating HD diagnosis. Several years ago, Rob went in for his annual wellness visit, and he provided new information about his family history. Unbeknownst to Rob, his father, from whom he was estranged, lived and died with Huntington's disease. During the visit, standard labs were ordered to evaluate his liver function, his kidney function, his cholesterol levels, and with this new additional family history, his, his, with, and with good intentions, his Huntington gene status. The clinic staff called Rob on a Friday afternoon, and generally nothing good in medicine happens on a Friday afternoon. He informed him that his cholesterol, liver, and kidney function were perfect, but that he was gene positive for HD. Rob promptly consulted with Dr. Google, and after reading about, more about HD, he was devastated and in a space of fear and despair with thoughts of suicide. Fortunately, Rob reached out to our HD clinic for help. Our team spent countless hours with him over several visits, listening to his concerns, reassuring and educating him about HD. We dispelled the myths and misinformation he read on the internet. During a recent visit, Rob reflected on the time he spent with us after receiving this devastating diagnosis. He said that in hindsight, finding out his HD gene status was actually the best thing that ever happened to him. It changed his perspective and allowed him to view his life, which will inevitably be shortened due to HD, through a clearer lens. He now has a greater appreciation for the fragility and beauty of life. Rob expressed sincere gratitude for the time our team spent listening to him with intention and purpose providing humanistic, compassionate care. What are the pertinent points from Rob's story? Number one, never underestimate the power of the human connection and the positive impact that compassionate, empathetic care, even in the face of an incurable disease, can have. Number two, never underestimate the importance of the trusted relationships that you will form with your patients. They will look to you for wisdom and guidance, support, and healing. Friends, your journey through medical school is not just an academic pursuit. This is a transformation of the self. Envision the impact that you will have on the lives of the individuals, families, and communities you encounter. 
beyond the textbooks and clinical rotations, recognize the power of the human connection as I described with Rob. Today, you will don your white coat. Your coat is a conduit through which empathy and understanding flow, transcending the barriers that separate healers from those seeking healing. Your white coat is more than a simple garment. Your white coat is a symbol of compassion. It is a shield against suffering and a beacon of hope. Your white coat will be heavy, both literally and metaphorically. In the pockets of your white coat, you will likely carry your phone, your stethoscope, ophthalmoscope, reflex hammer, and tuning fork, of course coming from a good neurologist. But even when your pockets are empty, there will still be a weight to your coat. This is the weight that you will carry throughout your journey as a physician. This is the weight of the lives that you will touch, the weight of the patients you won't be able to save, the weight of caring for a patient throughout their battle with an incurable disease like Huntington's when you know the disease will prevail. But to balance that weight will be the reminder of those that you successfully treat and that even amid defeat, will allow you to make a difference when you care for the person, not the disease, when you care with compassion, empathy, and humility. Students, in the sacred place between science and humanity, may you find your purpose. May your hands be steady, your minds sharp, and your hearts compassionate. And when the journey gets tough, and it undoubtedly will, Remember, the privilege bestowed upon you, the privilege to serve, to heal, and to make a profound difference in the world. As John P. McGovern, the namesake of our school said, we physicians are a privileged lot, privileged to serve, to share the human drama of our patients, and to contribute to their health and well-being. You have all earned your place here at McGovern Medical School. You are right where you're supposed to be. So take a moment to look around at your friends and families today. Appreciate this moment that symbolizes the beginning of your transformative journey. Congratulations on re reaching this milestone. And may the white coat you don today be a constant reminder of the profound impact you are destined to make in the lives of others. Welcome to the noble calling of medicine. Welcome to McGovern Medical School. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fristemi. At McGovern Medical School, we require that each student sign a student ethical pledge, expressing the values of this institution with particular reference to the physician's dedication to lifelong education. Students, by signing the book that is displayed at the front of the stage, you are committing yourselves to uprightness and honor in your academic and professional lives and respect and compassion in your relationships with patients. Today, we have invited Gabrielle Del Carmen and Ellie Tuchai, members of our chapter of the Gold Humanism Honor Society, to recite the class to recite to the class the Student Ethical Pledge. I acknowledge and accept the privileges and responsibilities given to me today as a physician in training and dedicate myself to providing care to those in need. I will approach all aspects of my education with honesty and integrity, embracing opportunities to learn from patients, teachers, and colleagues. I will always maintain the highest standards of professional conduct. I will certify only that which I have personally verified, and I will neither receive nor give unauthorized assistance on examinations. I will value the knowledge and wisdom of the physicians who have preceded me. I will recognize my weaknesses and strengths and strive to develop those qualities that will earn the respect of my patients my colleagues, my family, and myself. I will respect the humanity, rights, and decisions of all patients 
and will attend to them with compassion and without bias. I will maintain patient confidentiality and be tactful in my words and actions. I will value the diversity of patients' experiences, cultures, and beliefs because it enhances my ability to care for them and enriches my education. I will not forget that there is an art to medicine as well as a science, and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding are integral to patient care. I will strive to earn the trust my patients place in me and the respect that society places upon my profession. I will recognize the privileges afforded to me as a physician in training and promise not to abuse them. Even as a student, I have a responsibility to improve the standard of health in my community, to increase access to care for the underserved, and to advance medical knowledge. As I accept these new responsibilities, I will not forget the importance of my own health and well-being. I will continue to value my relations with those who have supported me in the past and those who will share in my future. Knowing my own limitations and those of medicine, I commit myself to a lifelong journey of learning how to cure, relieve, and comfort with humility and compassion. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Thank you. The most tangible symbol of the responsibility and commitment assumed by you, the students, today is the white coat of the physician in training. I will ask you to come forward as your name is read by your society leader to don your white coat. As you leave the stage, you will sign the ethical pledge book and be given a copy to take away with you. I'd like to call up Dr. Sasha Adams, who is the leader of the James Red Duke Junior MD Society. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Sasha Adams, and I am the James H. Red Duke Junior MD Society leader. I have the privilege of bringing the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Uh, my first, uh, incorrectly in your program as in the Jackson Society, is Miguel Elizarras. <laughs> Rachel Hauschel. <laughs> Matthew Howry. <laughs> Ashna Kirpe. <laughs> Catherine McGarity. Frank Ramirez, Adarsh Suresh, and Jessica Varghese. Hello, I'm Dr. John Riggs, and I'm representing my colleague, Dr. Amanda Jerolimic, the Vincent Francis Ganay MD Society leader. I have the privilege of bringing the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Kishan Asokan. D'Angelo Ermeski. Ranithri Patawithavathane. Allison Purcell. Carly Reinhardt. Leah Rowan. Philemon Tan, Marcus Williams, and Noel Yang. I'm Dr. Bindu Ekanti, the Nancy and Clive Reynolds Society leader. I have the privilege of bringing the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Nikita Bhavani, Tucker Engels, Madison Horn, Catherine Horton, 
Jeff Q, Angelo Marinovic, Michelle Tan, and Trevor Taylor. I'm Dr. Michael Altman, the Herbert and Margaret DuPont Society leader. I have the privilege of bringing the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Hannah Breitchop. <laughs> Miami Eferim. Jose Galdemez Malera. Sarah Coe. Julia Parks, Kevin Shi, and Karen Zhang. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. I missed, I missed one. That's Sammy Jude. It's a tough act to follow. Okay, I'm Dr. Veronica Gonzalez. I'm the Rolinette and Burden Lawrence Society leader. I have the utmost privilege of um, bringing the following students to the stage to don their white coats. So first up, Mr. Alberto Hueso Perez. <laughs> Christian Chen. <laughs> Rachel Lee. Pranav Mehta. <laughs> Nina Nariman. Victor Ringyanu. <laughs> Hannah Thompson. And Brianna Velasquez. Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Gio Mojica. I am the Dr. Frank and Lynn Arnett Society Leader. And I have the privilege of bringing the following students to stage to don their white coats. Donovan Calvert. Samuel Fernandez Perez. Karsten Fields. Richa John. <laughs> Tiffany Wen. <laughs> Brian Nyakiti. <laughs> Jessica Tabri. <laughs> and Alex Wen. So I have the privilege of introducing the William Deppabot JD Society in lieu of their society leader, Dr. Monica Kodakanla, Stephen Ellsworth, <laughs> Joshua Haney, Aaron Lynn, Adelaide Meyer, Rim Tuhami, Catherine Zhang. I am Dr. Jean Su, the Georgiana and Robert Ladd Society leader. I have the privilege of bringing the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Efrain Amaro. Grace Drew. <laughs> Lindsay Forschner. <laughs> Zoha Khan. 
Jemima Lewis. Bryant Wynn. Parker Towns. Ellen Shang. Hello, I am Dr. Hilary Fairbrother, the Linda and James McInvale Society leader. I have the privilege of bringing the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Neil Alagave. Lance Babcock. Tara Darabadi. Lindsay Desplinter. Bailey Duhan. Anthony Liu. Nithya Narayana. Ethan Schweising. And Gia Valles. Again, um, I'm Erin Forstimming and the Evelyn H. Griffin Society leader. I have the privilege of bringing the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Lickett Argawal. Yeah. Lorna Baral. <laughs> Joseph Jansen. Daniel Latour. <laughs> Riley Ledbetter. <laughs> Kate Leo. <laughs> Grazelli Marquez. <laughs> Reese Moore. and Tiffany Sakahara. I have the privilege of bringing to the stage the Haley and David Higgins Society for their society leader, Dr. Elena Zamora, who is unable to be with us today. Brandon Ba. <laughs> Catherine Bender. Lalitha Kaligatla, Sanjana Likey, Jordan Matkin, Alec Malazzo, Nicole Noto, Tahir Kasim, and Madison Smith. I now have the privilege of calling to the stage the Robert A. Pete Sill Society for their society leader, Neha Mathal, who is unable to be with us today. Simon Burke. <laughs> Rohini Chahel. Beja Yosek. Andrew Kim. Sophia Lopez. Macy Niavera. And James Trippett. I now have the privilege of calling to the stage to don their white coat, the Barbara and Gerald Hines Society for their society leader, Dr. Jessica Jones, who is unable to be with us today. Reship Bosley, <laughs> Catherine Buckholt, Brandon Cunningham, 
Raven Edwards. Nivaja Loganathan. William McCarthy. Jessica O'Neill. And Jason Fan. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Gu Sara Guzman Reyes, the Becky and Ralph O'Connor Society leader. I have the privilege of bringing the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Haley Allen. Oluwatosin Banjo. Tarikul Imslam. Jason Lin. Shuita Mohapatra. Yasuf Sham. Claudia Silva. Christopher Williams. I now have the privilege of bringing to the stage the Laura and Tracy Society for their society leader, Dr. Mils Misty Ellsworth, who is unable to be with us today. Joshua Bunker. Jaden Custard. Allison Gentry. Joshua Hells. Monica Malavarapu. Suhana Ramasamy. Laura Rosa Divita. Abigail Rather, and Shreyas Yadula. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Modipe Idowo, the Anna Steinberger uh, PhD Society leader. I have the privilege of bringing the following students to the stage to don on their white coats. Matthew Brewer. <laughs> Caroline Anon. <laughs> Maxwell Hum. <laughs> Grisselin Metrum. On when <laughs> Toju Okori Ebo <laughs> Isha Parik Adam Mesevic. Congratulations. I now have the privilege of bringing to the stage the Isabella and Shevis Smythe MD Society for their society leader, Zi Yang Zhang, who is unable to attend today. Carolyn Crane. <laughs> Stephanie Generet. <laughs> Rakesh Kadharisan. Palavi Morali Thierin. Dylan Noltensmeyer. Nia Norwood. Riman Shah. Stephanie Tran. And Henry Ubalaker. I now also have the privilege of bringing to the stage to don their white coat, the Leah Lewis Stone and Jim Stone Society for their society leader, Dr. Christine Kerner, who is unable to be with us today. 
Taylor Carpenter. Sage Copling. Jack Counselor. Christopher George. Ariba Hafiz. Natalie Lanners. Ivani Patel. Shia Silhan. And Jack Struble. Hi, I am Dr. Amalia Guardiola. I am the Marnie Rose Society leader. I have the privilege of bringing the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Ahmad Abdel Hadi. <laughs> Deepika Bhatia. Jordan Jafarnia. Jared Lim. Lucia Martinez. Michaela Morgan. Shriya Parchuri. And Ethan Stokes. Hi, I'm Anna, Dr. Anna Leach. I am the Ann and Bill Stewart Society leader, and it is my pleasure and privilege to bring the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Carrie Clark. <laughs> Gabriela Colon. <laughs> Anjali Devi Reddy. Benjamin Ethan, <laughs> Merrick Garner, <laughs> Riley Keene, <laughs> Rebecca Park, <laughs> and Bernardo Trevino. I have the privilege of introducing the Mrs. June Wagoner Society for their society leader, Dr. Katherine Norman, who is unable to attend today. Connor Crow. <laughs> Nikhil Arabelli. <laughs> Kayla Goodman. <laughs> Vanchika Johnson. Sullivan McCreary. Anna Melendez Smith. And Nusha Rahman. I'm Dr. Michelle Barrett, the Anita Borges Studi Society Leader. I have a privilege of bringing my amazing students to the stage to don their white coats. Vilma Sofia Caballero. <laughs> Aditya Govind. <laughs> Malika Haji Karim. <laughs> Midhat Jafri. <laughs> Helena Namor. Peter Nikonowitz, Paige Fan, <laughs> Stefan Rene. Yeah. 
I have the privilege of bringing to the stage the Rick McCord Medical Society for their society leader, Dr. Michelle Ruda, who was unable to be with us today. Vikas Dada. <laughs> Leah Gottreit Merchant. <laughs> Ryan Katan. <laughs> Tiffany Kumala. <laughs> Briley Lavoy. <laughs> Roshan Mara. Noralise Rodriguez Santiago and Jordan Roy Lance. Hi, I am Dr. Ball Reddy, the Crawford and Hattie Jackson Foundation Society Leader. I have the privilege of bringing the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Allison Baker. Mackenzie Boudreau. Ethan Bui. Dakil Alim. Travis Johnston. Amber Meredia. Brendan O'Reilly. Kenneth Pham. And Allison Zeshang. Good afternoon, I'm Joshua Samuels, the leader of the Richard S. Ruiz Society, and I have the privilege and honor to bring the following students to the stage to don their white coats. Stephen Blake. <laughs> Natalie Celestino. <laughs> Abigail Irwin. <laughs> Sahana Kodali. Don Lee, Austin Pargas, Brianna Shen, Kenneth Skidmore, and Harrison Stewart. Hello, my name is Laden, Dr. Laden Agarok, the John S. Dunn Foundation Medical Society leader. I have the distinct privilege of bringing the following incredible students to the stage to don their white coats. Madison. <laughs> Kaylee Buck. <laughs> Gabriel Galan Castro. <laughs> Matthew Johnson. Aaron Kim. <laughs> Catherine Sherry. John Shin. And Avni Vora. So it's me again. And I have the privilege of introducing the last three societies. So I am privileged to bring to the stage the John H. Freeman Society for their society leader, Dr. Mark Dannenbaum, who is unable to attend today. Sydney Brand. <laughs> Christian Gomez. Spencer Keith. Katherine Lee, Erica McCauley, Julia Papa Panagotu, Syed Shams, and Emily Zhao. 
I now have the privilege of introducing the Nicole and Evan Katz Medical Society for their society leader, Dr. Konstantinos Charitakis, who could not be here today. Molly Anapolsky. Matthew Cow, Valerie Lamont, Rania Moyen, Remy Wynn, Ashley Okoye, Charles Ramsey, Kiara Scopise, and Ferdinando Sosa. Okay, so you know we're the ninth largest medical school in the country, 240 students, and I now have the privilege of introducing our final society for the afternoon, the Michael and Lauren Bain Society, for their society leader, Dr. Shiraz Yunus, who is unable to attend today. Paul Dairo, Gabrielle Dominguez, Kayla Evans, Michael Hayden, Ishani Kalei, Jean Navarro Sham, Anna St. Dennis, Mohammed Tariq, and last but certainly not least, Olivia Tran. I will now ask Dr. Sheila Lahoti to lead the students in the Hippocratic Oath. All right, would the class of 2027 please rise? Hippocrates, considered by many to be the father of Western medicine, wrote an oath that has become the hallmark of the medical profession and has been professed to in various forms by thousands of physicians for more than 2,000 years. With only minor changes since it was first written, this oath binds physicians to a code of civilized conduct demanded of those entrusted with healing of the sick. Please repeat after me. I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear by, whatever I hold most sacred, by whatever I hold most sacred, that I will be loyal to the profession of medicine, and just and generous to its members, that I will lead my life, and, my life, and practice my profession, in uprightness, and honor, in uprightness and honor, that into whatsoever house I shall enter, into house I shall enter it, shall the the sick, it shall be for the good of the sick, to the utmost of my power, of my power holding myself far aloof from wrong, from, wrong from, corruption, from corruption, from the tempting of others to vice, that I will exercise my profession solely for the cure of my patients, and will give no drug, 
perform no operation for a criminal purpose, even if solicited, far less suggest it. That whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of men which is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep inviably secret. These things do I swear. And now should I be true to this my oath? May prosperity and good repute be mine, be ever mine. The opposite should I prove myself forsworn. Congratulations to each of you as you continue through your medical journey. And and we would all like to invite you, our UT Development and Alumni Office would like to specifically invite you, students, family, friends, to a reception in the lobby. Thank you, and we'll see you in the lobby. Thank you.